Guess what? Guess who? It's your boy Lil Neil, and you know. That Drew Jones. Oh my god, here she goes. <laughs> Not Drew Brees, but Drew Jones. You know how they say, like, the Ohio State? Yes. I, just, I have to, you okay. know, I'm the okay. Drew you got some, Drew, you know what I can say? You got some swag? I don't know I about do. it. Not. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, today, you know what, Drew? We're going to keep it rolling. We'll keep it going. I'm yeah. excited. I love I love these little interviews we do. And yeah. and they're, they're, they're a lot of fun, especially when I get to go down memory lane. And yeah. uh, we're able to talk about... The glory days. Absolutely. We still got a couple left. I mean, you got yes. many. You know, I'm mine is... Uh, you haven't peaked just yet. Yeah, no, no. You know? I'm, I'm on that. I'm, you know, I got to the top and I'm, I can see... I'm just getting looking down and I'm like getting a little nervous. I don't know, but... Uh, just stay up there. Yeah, I'm going to try to... Yeah, I'm going to try to... I think I'll do that. I like that. But we're just talking going down memory lane. And remember coming from Fresno State, from, from town of Lamore and going to Fresno State, getting back with the Saints, and kind of going down memory lane, talked about the plan with the Jets, went played yeah. for the Saints first, and then from there went to the Jets, and now we're on the uh, Greener Pastures, and continuing this, this this journey for my 17-year career, and talk about the next stop, so we'll get into it, and we'll talk a little bit about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, right after I left the Jets, went to Tampa Bay. Well, so tell me, you went from the Deep South all the way to, I mean, Armageddon, the cold, <laughs> New York, yeah, right, and now right. you're going all the way back to the south. So again, what was the cultural transition like, you know, going from New Orleans to New York to Tampa Bay? I, you know what? It was, it, Drew, it was, it was unbelievable just to be able to experience my career in the National Football League. I don't know if I would have ever said, I mean, I went to New York once as a young lad. My parents were there, I think I was like eight or nine years old. Really, it was there a couple of days, really didn't really get to experience it. You know, didn't have your own money, you're on someone else's time. Yeah. So really didn't know what New York was really about until I got to go there. And then um, New Orleans, I've never been to New Orleans. I've never, in, in my wildest, my whole high school, college, never played against any, you know, Xavier or any school there. So never played or never been to New Orleans. And so I know I never would have probably been in New Orleans, let alone play there, let alone live there, let alone buy a house there. So my playing career brought me places that I never probably would have went. And Tampa Bay may be another one. I never spent any time in Tampa Bay, never went there for any, you know, anything. Don't know if I would have went in my latter part of my life. And now I go once a year, go back and visit my buddies, Mike Allstock, who I played with. But Tampa is a cool little town. People might not know. It's a cool party town too, little Ebor City. See, you didn't even on know. On the water. But, yeah, on the water. I'm actually getting ready to go there. Really? Are yeah, you? I'm going for a sports media convention. Oh my God, that should be a lot of. Uh, so you gotta tell me to get places yes, to I, go. I got you. I'll hook you up. See, she, <laughs> see, she wants to get. She, plug. she wants some plugs from the yes, old man. Let plug. her know what's happening. Two Absolutely. stones, one for plug. <laughs> Absolutely. Boom! I got you. Got you, girl. But Tampa was really neat, man. Hot. Oh my God. Oh, I'm sure. Training camp at university is uh, practice at. at, at, at uh, I think it's USF, where we practiced training camp there, and it was hot, so humid. I'm talking about you walk out and you're just sweating. You go to training just camp. Existing. Oh my God. I'm talking about losing five to 10 pounds of practice at oh, training geez. camp. You're just dripping wet. So, how much because food it, did you have to eat considering that? You don't even like, want to eat hardly because really? you're, you're just so dehydrated, so you just pretty much want to drink, and you'd have to force yourself to eat your proteins and of course, at night, you know, when it cooled down, you'd eat. They would have a training table open later, so guys kind of want to eat later on at night. But it's hard to eat that kind of eat that heavy yeah. eat a lot of food, especially but when you you're practicing twice a day. But you need to keep that weight on you, right? Though. Right. Okay. And, and there's a lot of guys that have to, you know, take more protein because they would lose a lot of weight and force them to try to hold it, hold the hold the weight on them. But Tampa was a friggin' neat little town. Um, you know, being in Ebor City and, and go and hang out there, go to Shepherd's Beach on Sundays. It was a pretty neat little place that they dock all their boats. Got to meet Hulk Hogan and being oh, there. Oh, really? Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. So they go over yeah. to Clearwater and over to St. Pete and, yeah. and uh, hang out there. So Tampa Bay was a very, very neat experience uh, just living in that city. And you get to travel down to the Caribbean and yeah. all the little countries down there. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. There were some very, very very neat places in Florida. Um, Orlando, of course, from Tampa. Take that quick little 45 minute flight over to Miami. So, there was a lot of good times in Tampa. So, I, I, I enjoyed it. 
Let's, let's uh, talk about actual football okay. type of stuff. Yeah, see, so, so much partying. Let's talk about the actual game that was that yeah, are, the, the reason. Game. The reason why I was there. Yes, the the, the name to the, the come to fame, the rise right. to fame. Right. Here we go. For the game. Um, so you talk, talk to us about your coach. You played for legendary Tony Dungy. He's somebody who you know. When I first started watching football, I you know learned who he was and learned to admire him and he retired so you actually got to play for him so what was that like tony dungy was an amazing is an amazing individual an amazing man and just helped me in so many ways not just on the field but off the field he has a company called all pro fathers all pro dads that he helped speak life and mentor fathers and do a lot of things that tony dungy wanted to do because you know, unfortunately, he lost his son to, uh, to suicide, and, and he was very open about some of those things and what he wanted to do to become an, even a better father, which he's always was a good father. But sometimes things just happen, and uh, being there in, in Tampa Bay, whether we lost, whether we won, Tom Dungy was so consistent, always consistent, always wanted to push you for excellence, but yet still, he put it on you. Guys, you're men. Guys, you handle it your way. Guys, this is what you have to do. If you do these things, this is success you're going to have. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was different coaching philosophy. I've had Bill Parcells, a rah-rah, tough guy. You, you, you kind of fear, you, you walk in. When he comes in, you walk in another direction. And Jim Mora that I had in New Orleans, playoffs. Jim Mora friggin' was mean. Jim Mora was just tough. I love him. I still talk to Jim Mora, you know, him and Jim Mora Jr., his son, coach of UCLA. But those guys were tough. Tony Dungy, he he ruled with the with the soft hand. It was, but the conviction that he would give you, the way that he held you accountable, it was just it was you know you wasn't you didn't fear him like you feared the other coaches, but you just the respect level that right. you had for Tony Dungy was unbelievable. He gave me the opportunity to play in Tampa Bay. Love being under his mentorship, and and still today I do stuff with all pro all pro dads. He's invited me out to speak speaking events for him and do certain things with his organization. He's just a great guy. He's helped so many at risk men. He helped guys take them from being kids to adults to men. Taught men how to be more than just stud masculine man taught men how to become loving fathers caring husbands doing all those things so that experience was unbelievable i remember playing there we're playing against jacksonville jaguars didn't go to playoffs there but i never forget it we were in a tight game against jacksonville we're up by two i'm having a great game blowing guys up blocking great i remember saying dude this linebacker's ready, we should run K-5. And it's, it's a play where I run and block the defense in, and I act like I'm blocking, and I slip in the flat. And I remember I called, it's raining that night, I said, tell the coach, we need to run this play. I'm standing, I'm telling you this play's gonna go. I run at the guy, he thinks I'm a block, and I slip in the flat. Trent Dilford, the quarterback, plays me at Fresno State, throws me a pass, a little heat on it, raining a little bit, I'm like, oh my God. And I look, there's no, He's on 70 yards, and I'm gonna catch the ball. It's six. I go, um, ball's come right, coming right to my hands. I remember like yesterday, K5. Right when the ball get there, I take my eyes and look, think I'm going for a touchdown. Ball coming right to my hands. Third, it's 32. I make that catch. I mean, it's a touchdown. We go up by nine. You know, we're up by two. We catch that. You add seven onto it or go, you know, go up by eight. Or go for two. Go up by nine. And we'll go for a two-point convert. I dropped that pass. I remember coming to the sideline and Tony's right there. And I just dropped my hand. And he's like, he said, that's all right. But I know it wasn't all right. And, because, and, and it was just like, I remember that play and just the disappointment on my face when I was losing the game. I think about that play all the time. But... That was one of those moments that I just felt like I let Coach Dungy let our team down. And that was like week number six. So still we had a long time to go. Do you know we missed the playoff by one game? Oh, geez. So. Well, don't let it hang on your head. Yes, I'm still. I'm, I'm, so, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's that, it's that, it's that, a team uh, sport for I, a right, reason. But, team right. Sport. I mean, it, that, that type of stuff happens a lot. I, you it, know, it, it does, comes down to the one play. It, it does, Drew. And, but. Since that happened early in the game, wasn't it? It, it, it did, you know. Since it, it, even though it happened early in the season, even though it was at the end of that game that we could have sealed that victory, even though it, it happened early in the season, 
looking back, you make that, you just never know how what happened. So right. that was just one of those moments in Tampa Bay, and you know, going down memory lane, that's one of those things that just stuck with me as a player that, God, I wish that moment, that moment that you wish you could have got back to. I think that year we were a good team, and you never know what would have happened, but just, uh, you know, just going down memory lane, talking about Tampa Bay and the different players and the guys that I got to play yeah, with. Tell me about the defense. Oh tell my me God. about the, the success. The defense, yes. <laughs> that defense, you thank you. The defense, Warren Sapp, um, Rondé Barbara, Tiki's brother, mm-hmm. cornerback that we had, uh, Sapp Hall of Famer, Derek Brooks, uh, Hardy Nickerson. We had two Hall of Fame, the Hall of Famer guys on that defense. That defense was unbelievable. So uh, that was Lovey Smith who ended up being the head coach, going to coaching and playing a Super Bowl against Tony Dungy, your coach. They played against each they they coached against one another. Um, he was in he was in a, when a coach was in Indy and his former his pupil, which is uh, Lovey Smith, ended up coaching for Chicago Bears. So those two coaches met in the Super Bowl some years later. So that defense was unbelievable. Great guys, great men that I got to play with uh, on that defense, and they made us a lot better offensively. Got to play with, like I said, the coach, the, the quarterback that played with me at Fresno State, Trent Dilfer, and then we had our backfield. Mike Allstott, they, you know, they called the backfield when me and him was on the field, we called that Rhino backfield because he was like 240, 50 pounds. I was like 250 pounds, so we called that the Rhino backfield. How much backfield. you weigh now? No, I'm just kidding. You, you are, see, you guys see what she does? She's always kidding. on me. She's I'm terrible. Don't ask me how much I yeah, weigh. She laughs. I mean, she's terrible. And so we had that back door was called Rhino. And the back door when me and Warp Dunn was in the, the back door was called Ponies. Because we were Warp's really small guy in stature. And it was so much fun. That year, the reason why I know that we were good and I knew that we could have been special. And that's why that pass just hunts me to this day. Minnesota Vikings go 15 and 1 that year. And that's the year, that, they, that year they should have won the Super Bowl. They ran, they ran Anderson, missed the field goal kick. They were the best team probably in the league. 15 and 1, great team. That year, we beat, we lined up and ran the ball down their throat. It just that pony lying in the backfield. And that's why that year's always hunting me because we were the only team that beat them that year. And that was the year that I was like, God, we we had so much talent. But playing with Warwick Dunn, amazing guy. And that's a guy I kind of wanted to focus on. We were going down memory lane, but that's a guy, I know we talked about Tony Dungy. That's another guy. If you have an opportunity, go look up who Warwick Dunn is. Warwick Dunn, small running back, really short guy, guy from Louisiana. Lost his mom in, I think, his senior year in high school, or his freshman year in college when he said, you know, and, and it was interesting, lost his mom. She was a police officer and, got, and she was shot and killed in the line of duty. In line of duty. Work done had a brother and sister. Do you know this guy's college and I raised his brother and sister? This guy didn't have a college life. He brought his family and he got drafted in the first round, went to Tampa Bay. Moved his sister, brother, raised them his whole life. And when he got to Tampa Bay, he had a foundation, and he still does to this day. Every year he would build a home for a single mom and their kids. And this guy still does that to this day. One of the nicest gentlemen you would ever meet. Even when he went to the Atlanta Falcons and no longer played in Tampa Bay, just the way free agency goes. Had a great career there. Arthur... Blanks, the owner of the Atlanta Falcons, loved him, who's the owner, by the way, the majority owner of Home Depot, loved him so much that he gave this guy ownership in the team. Think about an owner just said, you know what, because of what you're doing, saying, just give it to him. Oh, wow. And work done to this day still builds, every year builds a couple homes for single moms, single parents, to raise kids, and he gives them this house. They furnish the homes. It, this is unbelievable. So you guys get up to it. Go look at work done, what he does. And you got to play with him. You got, got to, to have a yes. relationship or friendship with him. Friendship, relationship to this day. Uh, be able to go out there. I love it. I'm able to go out there and, and visit more every year and, and see the great things that he's doing in his community. Uh, it's just amazing. Really okay. amazing. <laughs> I'm low, and you know this is... The John. We're signing out. Love y'all. Peace. See you next time.